Yeah! Mal, you need to be careful because, like, anytime you do something like that, I'm uh -huh. probably just gonna make it the next episode. I know. All right, well. That's fine with me. That, that is fine with me. Okay, I just finished my show notes. Okay, all right. Uh, here, can you read this for me, Mal? Uh, hello. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get? What? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. All right, let's hear. That, is that a... I think that's a lady. Who, who knows? Yeah. Uh, it, so give me something, like, like kind of deep and seductive, Tony. Really? It doesn't have to be seductive, but kind of, like... No, no, dry we're gonna try and deep and nice. no. If I do if I do deep and dry, then like my voice is just gone. Oh, okay. I could buy voice. Such a small yet comfortable place. <laughs> Truly, an, o an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of the suburban desert. A place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. Mal, this is a good choice for this voice. Thank you. I knew. <laughs> a nest where everyone from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie can just sit to kill their insides. Truly, a real persona non grata. Non. Uh, that's Latin for mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and philosophical. Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here what will you have then 17 uh excuse me i said 17 7 plus 10 7 plus teen <laughs> uh what does that mean what does it mean to you just to be sure 17 is about the drink you want right only if you want it to be uh 17? The hell does that mean? <sighs> by 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 number. We've got 24 drinks, right? Let's give them the 17th drink. Alright, yeah, yeah, let's do that. I can feel it. What's it gonna be? It's gonna be a piano, piano man. man! Ah, this is appropriate. Uh-huh. One, two, three. Can't stop doing this. Can't it's stop. In my won't bones. stop. No, I I want to stop. No, wait, not age. Because it's on the rocks. It's on the rocks and mix. Don't forget the camera dream. Yeah. Perfect. What Beautiful. a piano, man. How is this a 17? It isn't. You said 17 would only be related to your drink if I thought it was. And I think it isn't. <gasps> Did we fuck up? Maybe. Ooh, you subverted my expectations by taking me literally. Sneaky. And what brings you here, Mr. I'm. Arma <laughs> Wait, Armandio? Arman yeah. Armandio. I'm Armandio. <laughs> God. Virgilio, Virgilio Armandio. Virgilio, you think so? Virgi okay, it could be Virgilio. Yeah, right. I'm Armandio. Virgilio Armandio. See? I introduced myself using the Asian order because that's a lot more polite. Oh, Jesus. Okay, all that's right. just... All right, well... <laughs> um, and I came here looking for an otherworldly experience I was passing by and saw this place is called Valhalla I want to see the souls of resting warriors the wounded spirits of noble souls the golden hall full of never-ending banquets the lively Valkyries looking over them we have some arcade machines on the corner no 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 you're taking me too literally you see, I'm being poetic. I'm giving a mystical air to a mundane affair. Rice. I wanted to see drunk people. I wanted to see waitresses and food. I wanted to see the bar in all of its decadent glory. Well, you're out of luck. Today's been quite the slow day. Not that I'm very surprised given how things have been going in the streets, though. <sighs> Humans are a nasty bunch. That much is true making a ruckus coming at each other but that's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own kind uh, I'm no zoologist but I'm pretty sure that's not the case oh yeah then give me an example not zoologist bartender like I said I don't know exact details I just know that isn't right if memory serves right once a lion takes over pride every cub born from another lion is killed or something <sighs> takes over a pride. You can't take over pride. Pride isn't a tangible thing. You need to stop making things up, not zoologist bartender. 
But going back on topic, do you know what the number 17 means? The atomic number of chlorine? No, and Chloe is a name, not a number, you know. The group where halogens are in the periodic table. Stop making up words like halogens, periodic, and table. <laughs> okay then, I give up. 17 is us. Eh? Every human has 17 pairs of chromosomes. That number is the whole foundation of I you and me. it was me. like 54 or something. It's 23. <laughs> what is? Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, not 17. Well, they're both primal numbers, so it's the same idea. Primal? Do you want anything else? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Okay. <laughs> a plum floating perfume in a... Son of a bitch. Look at bottled drinks. <laughs> Fedora with perfume in a plum. That's so stupid. Also, I like I like Jill just being like, Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, is that, is that yep, it? Yep. Oh, plum fume. Ugh. Here. Huh. You didn't... Wait, you did. Enjoy. I will. I'll drink this, um, perfume. Mm. You don't really have to. Yeah, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender, have you ever thought about death? How? What if we're already dead? Both of us. What? What tells you I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this reality is real and we were not in fact in heaven or hell all along? What if everything you made up to this what if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20-something in his room? Mm. I could punch you to make you feel reality. I don't care about any of that actually. <laughs> Jesus, Jill. This reality is real for me, and that's all that matters. It's such a closed-minded way of seeing things. Is it? You need to get away from the factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your uh. reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start... <gasps> the habanera has started! It means the twilight of the gods in German. That's not true. By the way. Well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order. Um, what? Was that like? Who the fuck was that? Who was that? Who was, was that? that? Was that like a villain? I don't know. Was that a villain? <laughs> they had a question mark on their forehead. Oh shit, you're right. Oh god. A couple of nearby cars. A couple. Oh, it's so hard to get out of that voice. A couple. Oh, it's hard to get out of that voice. <sighs> okay. A couple of nearby cars exploded. It seems. Oh, hell. Let me take a look out the window. Be careful. Uh, I see lots of flashes in the distance. Most likely gunshots. Jesus, Jill, get down. Jill, come here for a sec. What? About five gigabytes of reporting of report. Five gig. Is that really? That's it? About five gigabytes of reports proving that several white knight squads have been used to cover. Illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group. We're receiving reports of several units going rogue and using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the street. Oh, fuck. Several counterterrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue the crazed units after a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration from Zaibatsu Corp's CEO on the subject, but until then... Things are ugly in and outside of that bank, it seems. I'd recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system. And I'll be here protecting you, as an added bonus. <sighs> yeah, I guess I'll stay tonight. Yeah, look at Jill being like, Oh, oh no. no! I have to spend the night in the bar with Dana being protecting me? What a hellscape I Such live in. Such a hassle. Also, I'm pretty sure our talking <sighs> cat can take care of itself. Yeah. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Do you mind sleeping in my office? Oh, sleeping in Dana's office. Oh no, surrounded by her 
everything. Smell and stuff. And uh, Dana things. <laughs> Danishes? <laughs> no, I guess it's fine. Good. Uh, let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have a Zonkantu on hand just in case. The metal bat with nails? There's nothing it can't bash. <laughs> Say, Gil, four. Hope everything's better by tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Damn. Sleep tight. I'll protect you. Wait, why does that cost three hundred dollars? It. She's giving us three hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Which is like three bucks. Um, we didn't get flawless service bonus. Yeah, we we made a mistake. Uh, I think on seventeen was the mistake. Fuck. I know. But which is weird, because that really seemed like what we should yeah, do. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's easy. You, you, you. Yeah, you said it literally in that voice. It's uh, if so you, If you easy. go back to the beginning of the episode, you'll hear Mal saying it in that so voice. So easy. Sukaban. For some reason, I keep a... Uh, what was the name of the of the company that makes the Hello Kitty like series? Sanrio? For some reason, I keep thinking of Sanrio whenever I see Sukaban, and I know that's not right. Uh, Although, that would be kind of badass to have Hello Kitty herself walk in here. That would be pretty cool and weird. Rise and shine. <sighs> Good morning. It's 11 a.m., though. That's morning for me on the weekends and any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them, at least. How so? Zaibatsu Corp's president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. That just seems really dangerous. Yeah. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. Make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out, and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot? Holy shit. Damn. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on the edge too. I wonder if Say is okay. Should we be worried about Gil? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that... Whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say even safer wherever he is than here. I sure hope so. Are we in work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, all right. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay, then. Let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. <laughs> is that safe? Sounds good. Is that safe? I mean, they probably just like stick it into some, like, stick their hand in some sort of square and lunch pops I, I out. mean, that's true. That's true. While, while charging them like $500. Uh huh. Also, Mal, this is literally what we were talking about. This yeah, is something else. It's something new. There's something going there are on in this. Tickers and in everything. Here. Tickers? Yeah. Is that what these are called? Uh huh. Oh, I never knew that. Tickers. And... T-I-C-K-E-R-S. Gur. That spells tickers. Can you read your line, please? Okay. <laughs> it is getting rapidly dark in this room. And here we are. Home sweet home. Thanks a lot. Hey, boss. Want to hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah. Grab a beer. Chill out for a bit. Mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway. So, yeah, sure. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh, yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. To more beer? I was going to say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. But I think we're safe here. What the fuck does that mean? Is that, is that euphemism? I don't know. I don't know. Come on in, then. Excuse me. Want one? Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me, though. Smoke if you want to. Thanks. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? Yeah, it gets cold from time to time, but nothing that Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. All right, boss. You're not very good with the cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here, either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I have this hoodie from some time ago, and it was too big for me. Why buy it, then? 
It was dirt cheap. Right. Wait, wh where did you get this one? Dunno, some flea market ages ago. Why? Nothing. It's just like one I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use. It's just... It just ripped. I see. You can keep it if you want. I never used it anyway. Um, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17. Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. All right. Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. <laughs> what? Oh, what? What? Poor. Look at that big full portrait. It's, it's not really beautiful. in the art style of anything else we've seen so far. Yeah, too. it's fine. Yeah, no, no, I just think that's kind of funny. Yeah. Say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring in my general direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just four. He's just wary of any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat? They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home, we had a bear. Ah, uh, I see. What? Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. Oh my god, is that a fucking Avatar The Last Airbender reference? No, I think it's a hot sauce reference. What? Bosco. Wait, no, it's a chocolate reference. What? It's a chocolate syrup reference. What? I'm pretty sure it's a chocolate syrup. The name of the king's pet bear in Avatar The Last Airbender is called Bosco. Yeah, and that's a chocolate reference. <sighs> what if I got saliva on your toe, Tony? Right, or your let's foot? Let's just see what's next. <laughs> we can't, Mal, we can't talk about saliva the entire Let's Play. <laughs> hmm, this picture here isn't something you see every day. What? Me taking such a sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? That's, um... The one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. Gay. The one on the left is Gabrielle, her sister. Huh. Is this pic recent, or...? Actually, that one's from three to four years ago. Hmm. You look exactly the same. Are you sure? Are you sure she looks exactly the same? I'm only 27. What did you expect? That's why they say kids. That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. Let's just say that everything ended with us, both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. Damn, Jill. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her? I just went away. Haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing. And you look so happy in the pic. Why have her pick out like this, then? I just couldn't get my mind off something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs. Putting your head in their chest. Oh. Listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Oh. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. I don't know. I felt nostalgic. Then miserable. <laughs> uh. I'll just put this away. I've been meaning to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. I'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm? What's that on the table? Huh? Looks like an envoy. It's nothing, nothing! Now please, give that to me! Jill is so secretive. Lope. All right. I saw nothing. Don't worry. Uh, uh, anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. 
Whoa, there's so many new screens here. There's a porch. Oh, this is our porch, isn't it? Wow, and we've got a Kiramiki billboard right next to our uh, apartment. Shine spark. Also, beers so far zero. Cans left 12. Remaining beer, 100%. Damn, you have lots of beer. Drink! <gasps> oh, I drink like 20% of my current beer. Wow. Okay. Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. That beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? The drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one is more of a pilsner. In English, please. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. I like how when I press the button, she actually drinks. <laughs> Don't know, it doesn't taste like a lighter to me. <sighs> nice line read, Mal. Is this one made with that, um, what was the name of the base liquid you use at the bar again? Mm, Nutriogenic Dicometrical Lidogenol, or NDL. I almost got that one. You almost did. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the Maiden Kiss polluted water supplies. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> the effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And is this one made with it? Let's see. Yep, here it is near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch? It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I just opened up another beer. Yeah. I don't know why, but I really like this mechanic. I see, and I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. Guilty as charged. I still have that bottle of rum somewhere around. Do you want some of it? Will you have some too? Not really, no. <laughs> Jill, then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Dunno, what with being my boss and all. I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm boss in name only anyway. And paycheck. That's good to know. And stock options. On a side note, it surprises me you kept that poster of me in the room. And even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know? Does it make you uncomfortable? If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. I'm still wondering why you didn't, though. Aside from filling an empty spot in the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. Okay. I guess it's like if someone gave you... Dunno. A dildo-shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyways, so it's kind of pointless. What? No steamy nights of passion? Not since... a year ago, I think. And I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. Uh, oh, oh, wait, use use the fancy text thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, shit. And not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Oh. Ew, oh, yeah. Huh. That is a mess. Glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo-shaped trophy. Did you just call me dildo face? <laughs> That's what friends are for. Uh, hey, Jill, where did you get that black four ball? Well, as with any black cat or house cat in general, he's actually a stray. I found him in the alleys near the building, not long after I moved here, I think. Ah, I see. It was quite the sight, though. He was cornered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. Hmm. He was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There's a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rainwater in it, so I threw the water over the dogs. 
They ran, and I figured the cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out the little shit started following me. <laughs> the little shit. <laughs> so you brought it home. At first, I wanted to see if I could find him a new home, but... Having him welcome me whenever I came back was just too much for my heart, so he ended up staying. It was destiny, girl. When he came, he was so cute, though. Not like the fat mass that's sleeping on the table. Hey, you're not a spring chicken yourself, you know. Uh. Uh. Oh ho! Shit, I actually did that in front of someone else. <laughs> so uh, it's Jill talking Jill to herself! Oh my god! It's not a future cat, it's just Jill talking to herself! That's so funny because you remember the jokes that Four was making originally, like, uh, many episodes ago about Jill talking to herself? Uh, <laughs> let's take a drink for that one. Yep. Oh! <laughs> anyway! Don't anyway me! Do you normally speak for your cat like that? Maybe. <sighs> I wonder if Gil's alright. Hey, and if you want to see the rest of this scene, and if Gil's alright, you should join us for the next episode of Valhalla. Hell yeah. So thanks for watching everybody. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. You should also check out our Patreon. It's in the end card and the video description. Hey, thanks a bunch for watching. We really appreciate it. Shine spark!